Hello once again, Oso here, and I just wanted to first start off and say thank you to everyone who is subscribed and still watching my channel. I know it has been a while since my last upload, but this video is something that I wanted to make for so long now, and it was a video that needed a lot of research and time put into it, so it could be as good as I can make it. Iceberg videos have been one of my favorite YouTube genres for a while now. Topics ranging from lost media, cartoons, video game series, they all exist. However, I noticed at the time I decided to make this video that there was not a single Bionicle Iceberg video. I wish to change that, but I'm not the first person to do this. This video will just be my interpretation of this iceberg. I also used one of the pre-made icebergs I found on Google Images, but I decided to remove some entries I felt that just weren't good enough, and add as many topics that I thought were good enough. Now with the intro out of the way, let's start the video. I had the red one is a phrase used by people who only have vague memories of owning Bionicle sets from their childhood. Bionicles themselves are recognizable, but recalling names can be somewhat difficult. There's probably iterations of the phrase that can be based off of other colors. The Cyclonator Z copypal stuff, from what I gathered, is just a Navy SEAL copypasta but replaced with Bionicle characters, phrases, and places. I can't find any record of it online, so you just have to take my word for it. TTV Podcast or The Three Virtues is a podcast created by a group of LEGO fans. They are known for their Bionicle set reviews hosted by LJ Johnson and other Bionicle related videos like Tier Lists, but they also create videos on other LEGO themes like Ninjago. They also host a canonization contest in collaboration with Greg Farshti, the main writer for the Bionicle story. Beaver House is another group of friends who create Bionicle related content. One member of the group, Fakiti, obtained an early build of the cancelled Bionicle game The Legend of Mata Nui and streamed it on the channel. This discovery is the reason the game is listed on Found Media on the Lost Media Wiki. RSG or Red Star Games is another group of Bionicle fans who contribute to keeping the spirit of Bionicle alive. They have and created fan-made Kanoe and their own Bionicle stories with original characters. They have also created a Bionicle tabletop game. BZ Power is one of the oldest Bionicle forums to exist. BZ Power is a forum dedicated to Bionicle news and discussion. They were a premier website when Bionicle was still an active LEGO theme and was a meeting place for members of the community. They have collaborated with the LEGO group themselves before and hosted contests with them. Them too. Biog or Bionicle General is a Bionicle related thread hosted on the toy board of 4chan. They are known for campaigning for Hoserix during the Hellrix canonization contest hosted by TTV by asking for support from other boards on 4chan and other sites on the internet. Biog is also responsible for the creation of this iceberg. The movies refer to the four Bionicle movies officially released by the LEGO group. The Miramax trilogy are all available for free on YouTube and make for a great way to digest Bionicle lore. Vorigi was said to be the the Seven Toa and remain to this day the oldest Bionicle Photoshop hoax. Variki, as you can see, is clearly just a palette swap version of Tahu with a Photoshop Pakari. Variki is supposed to be the Toa of Energy, evident by the Vo in his name, short for voltage, and Riki, which in Japanese means power. Variki can also be 3D printed, so you too can own your own Variki. Doom is Pterodax refers to the Soul Turaga of Metra Nui actually being Pterodax in disguise. While Pterodax masqueraded as Doom, he killed off the Toa manga and forced the Matoran into Matoran spears. It was revealed Pterodax was Doom in the second movie. LEGO went as far to refer to the combo model utilizing Nadiki, Kreka, and Nivwak as ultimate Doom and calling the Kanoe Krakan including with it the Mask of Power to not spoil the climax of the second movie and the character the model was supposed to represent in Legends of Metra Nui. Brickonicle refers to Bionicle characters and settings recreated with system LEGO in lieu of mainly Technic and CCBS style pieces that Bionicle utilized in normal Bionicle sets. Fan to rationalize if Bionicle were to ever return, it would have to be in LEGO system form because LEGO has scrapped the majority of CCBS parts. CTV member Sakota even made a Bionicle diorama of the history of Generation 1 that quickly grew a large number of supporters. Hero Factory was the series that replaced Bionicle in 2010. Hero Factory is known for utilizing a completely different build style than Bionicle, that being CCBS, or the character and creature building system. The story focuses on a group of heroes built to capture villains. The main team we see in the story was led by Preston Stormer, and each new wave would have the main hero team change their armor to adapt to a new environment and foes. Hero Factory ran for four years before being cancelled in 2015, in time for the second generation of Bionicle.
810, also known as Bionicle Day, is an unofficial Bionicle fan holiday. It's used as a day for fans to post Bionicle-related art, mocks, music, or anything Bionicle-related online. People who have worked on Bionicle like Greg Farshti and Christian Faber are also known to participate in the form of interviews on Bionicle Day. 810, if you haven't noticed yet, appears to look like Bio, and depending on your country's date format, Bionicle Day can either be in August or October. But it's no surprise most fans participate in both days regardless. Bionicle Prototype images are just photo documentation of Bionicle sets before they are finalized and released. Prototypes can come in the form of concept art, 3D prints, or kit bash sets. People who have worked on the series may hold on to some of these prototypes, and some of them even end up in the hands of some lucky fans. Bionicle prototypes are sought after by fans for their rarity and history. Destiny is one of the three virtues in Bionicle, alongside unity and duty. An example of this would be the Toa Metru, who were destined by Mata Nui to save the Matoran of Metra Nui and relinquish their Toa powers and transform into Turaga. Another example of destiny would be Matoro's destiny to sacrifice himself for Mata Nui after the Mask of Life chose him to wear it. 14B2020 was a hashtag created by one of the series founder, Christian Faber, in 2019. 14B2020 is an ambiguous in its meaning and fans of the series seem to have their own interpretations. Some say it's Christian Faber's attempt at trying to pitch another reboot of the series. Some people say it has to do with the project that he's working on called Rebel Nature. And some think it was a joke gone too far because in Europe, dates are written in the format day, month, year. And 14B2020 could be broken up as the first day of April, the fourth month of the year, and the year 2020. Toa Duma being Nork refers to that in development of the two Toa Haga sets, originally they wanted the Toa of Fire to be represented by Duma. This is confirmed by series writer Greg Farshti. The reason for the change was decided by Bob Thompson, the father of the Bionicle series, to paint a better image of what the Rahaga looked like before they were mutated. Toa Iruni was also supposed to be the Toa form in the Diki originally. G2 killed Bionicle is an observation made by many people who are either a part of the Bionicle fandom or just spectate it, like the general adult Lego fan base. A good amount of both groups of people seem to agree that Bionicle's failure to attract an audience that fit Lego's expectations was a wake-up call that maybe Bionicle was just not a series people were very interested in anymore. Whether you subscribe to this theory or not is up to you to make. I am entirely ambivalent to this theory because the theme alone was obviously not the problem and it seemed to be more of a combination of bad marketing and the story. The Great Beings Are Human is a theory that the creators of the Matoran universe and the Great Spirit Mata Nui was the work of humans. However, Greg Farshti has said multiple times the great beings are a part of the Glatorian species. Some people have theorized that we are the great beings as we have the power to build and create characters and stories the way that we want to. The council entry was a bit vague, however, two theories came to mind. One interpretation is that perhaps this is referring to the council founded by Takanuva, or Taraga Takanuva for that matter, in the Kingdom Alternate Universe. His council was made up of a lot of interesting individuals. Some of those beings include the Skakti Nektan, Rudaka, and even the Shadowed one. It makes sense when you realize they had to be forced to work together after their universe literally died. My second interpretation of this entry is that the council refers to the Taraga of Mata Nui. They communicate with one another around the Kini Nui. They spent 1,000 years lying to the Matoran so that they would stay put, and it was a necessary evil to continue to lie to the Matoran so that they would not try and wander to the Makuta's lair and try to escape back to the Matoran universe before the Seven Toa was found. Velika is the last entry for the second layer. If you don't already know, Velika was actually a great being disguised as a Pomatorn who helped construct the Great Spirit Mata Nui. He was also responsible for giving the creatures inside the Great Spirit robot sentience, as opposed to the Kastora of the Red Star, who still inhibit a sort of factory default setting. After Makuta was defeated for the last time, Velika escaped the Great Spirit robot and went on a murder spree, killing those of the Matoran universe who might get in his way, like the Lovecraftian monster Tren Krom and the despot Karzani. Velika's story is one I wished was delved into more, because it only cements my belief that Pomatorn are catalysts to some of the wildest moments in Bionicle lore. The Vahi in G2 is an observation made by the community that the Generation 1 Mask of Time looks like it would fit below the second generation Bionicle Mask of Time. This is considered one of the attempts by LEGO to link Generation 2 with Generation 1 directly. The Mask of Time is also called the Vahi in Generation 2 of Bionicle. The Vahi is also an easter egg in the Toa Masters advertisement. Solik is somewhat of a meme in the Bionicle community and is either considered a revered being of light or an example of how awful the Avmatorn build system was for 2000. 
2008 and subsequently 2009 and 2010. Bionicle was originally intended to have a fifth movie that would have the protagonist from Legend Reborn explore the planet Boda Magna, a planet that was going to be occupied by dinosaurs. Tuma would return as well, having made a deal with the Element Lords. However, LEGO intended to cancel Bionicle in 2009 and told the team to wrap up the story. The movie was canned but would have explored many new settings. A rough draft of the script is available online. Teradax was killed after a moon rock struck his head while he controlled the Great Spirit robot. But even though the main universe's Teradax is killed, multiple Teradaxes exist in other universes. And one of these alternate universe Teradaxes even being in the core universe, that being the Melding Universe Teradax, who was traded for Voltraz by Mazika to keep the number of beings in the core and Melding Universe in equilibrium. I wasn't quite sure what the original poster of this iceberg meant by this since Offmatorn can't reproduce biologically. There are, however, machines that exist in the Bionicle Universe that create Matorn when needed. It's a note these Matorn cannot turn into Toa. This theory is very interesting because it would explain why there were so many Borok to begin with. Reminder that Matorn that Light will eventually be reborn into Borok and work as Mata Nui's island cleansing crew. Love Isn't Canon was a concept retconned by Greg Farshney. Matorn were known to show affection to one another in the Mata Nui online game. Considering the theme was marketed to young boys, the concept of love would be unnecessary. The training arena playset was a cancelled Bionicle set from 2005. This was confirmed by Greg Farshney in a Q&A. The six Hordika staffs that were used in the released Hordika playsets are some of the only remnants of the cancelled set that still exists. There are no pictures online sadly, and a training arena would actually make sense as a set, seeing how a good portion of the third Bionicle movie was about the Toa Metru adapting to their new Hordika mutated bodies. LEGO themselves have confirmed they destroyed their old molds. This includes melting or burying the molds. I however doubt they burned or buried the molds on the property itself. LEGO mainly gets rid of these molds to keep them out of the hands of bootleggers and to make room for new molds. LEGO molds are replaced when they are worn out after printing bricks or when the piece is no longer in production for any new sets. Lego molds are also not very cheap to make, sometimes costing between ten dollars to $100,000 to produce. Boda Manga was intended to be the 2010 story setting of Bionicle. Had Lego not cancelled the series, the planet would be filled with dinosaurs and that most likely would have helped the Glatorian and Mata Nui by providing protection or acting as rides for them, or attack the protagonist and be used by their enemies, or completely unaligned. Not quite sure what this entry refers to, but perhaps it refers to how the Makuta species evolution had made them so very different than any other species in the Matoran universe. Their evolution made them beings that no longer needed to eat, sleep, or even breathe. They couldn't even be revived on their red star because of their antidermis. Vaki Acab on the iceberg likely refers to the connection to the 2004 Bionicle storyline, having the Toa fighting against the dictator of Metro Nui, along with his guards who are programmed to enforce the law, and Acab anti-police slogan that translates to all cops are bastards. The similarity between the two is likely the two groups resisting the police. Akmao 2008 refers to the cancelled storyline idea to have Akmao become a Toa of Shadow. The only remnants of this in the story that exists is the fact Icarax had originally flown to Metro Nui to transform Akmao into Shadow Matoran, but Takanuva intercepted Icarax and had a large portion of his inner light drained. Boneheads was the original concept of the Bionicle storyline. It would have much more tribal looking sets and more organic looking faces. There exists a video on Christian Faber's channel that shows video of the original Bonehead sets. Some set functions would later be reused for the first wave of Bionicle sets. The Crossing was a Bionicle story from the Glatorian era. What's interesting about this story is that it was only released officially in Polish. The online serial has since been translated by fans. The final entry of Layer 3 seems to be saying that LEGO planned to release more than two Toa Haga. We know the two Toa that we got in 2005 were at one point going to be Nadiki and Duma, but there is no proof LEGO has ever considered making four other Toa. The Mask of Life original version entry is the first of the fourth layer of this iceberg. Of course, like any other movie, there are cut moments from the original movie and scrapped ideas. For starters, did you know that originally there were two versions of the original Bionicle film script that were produced? One by Miramax and the other by Bob Thompson, one of the founders of Bionicle. 
Of course, we all know the former one, but what Thompson's version of the movie would have been like is only up to our imaginations. BMP or Biomedia Project is a website that records and hosts almost if not all Bionicle media that exists out there. It is highly recommended to check it out if you want to get into Bionicle lore or are just interested in reading certain moments in the Bionicle history. Reminder that this iceberg was created by 4chan. Greg Farshti at the time of this recording is still alive. Bionicle and Friends refers to a custom Toa Kaida mock as a background prop in an episode of Friends. I say custom because the mask is an Akaku instead of a mirror on its original Toa. There is also a fully built Toa Mata Kopaka in another episode. Unrelated, but my first time seeing Bionicles in a TV show was that episode of Malcolm in the Middle when Dewey was playing with a Tahu and a Gali. Botar's replacement refers to the fact that Icarax had killed the original Botar. The Order of Mata knew he had a member of Botar's species replace his role in the secret society. Brutaka plays a role in the Bionicle story of 2007 also. He was captured and sent to the pit by the original Botar for his crimes of deserting the Order of Mata Nui. A popular rumor back in the day was that there was going to be a pit mutated Brutaka set to be released that year. But like Variki, that was just a photoshop hoax. He can easily be recreated as it was just someone's mock of their interpretation of a pit mutated Brutaka. Craig and Faber are great beings can be a comparison one could make seeing how they created the characters that we love in the Matoran universe and the settings we know too. However, the great beings have been confirmed to not be human, but members of the Glatorian species, which are organic beings with mechanical upgrades. Bionicle Legends Invasion was a cancelled Bionicle chapter book that would have gone deeper in the towing Nika's journey down the court of Voya Nui into Mari Nui. The story was ultimately canned after Scholastic decided to shorten the amount of books to be released that year. This is considered lost media, however Greg Farshti confirmed the original story is gone since it was on an old computer and is likely to never be found. Production changes refers to the change of plastic colors in some Bionicle sets in 2005. Most people will know these production changes as LEGO switching from flat dark gold to pearl gold for the 2006 generation. LEGO was still producing the Battle of Metro Nui and the Tower of Toa around this time, which all can possibly have pearl gold pieces. Another not well known production change is Bomanga's Rutuka spinner change from an exclusive bluish gray to a regular silver Rutuka. George refers to a backlog character that is clearly just a Tohanga. Backlot was a free-to-play game based off LEGO Studio. We now know of him as Takua, but Templar Studios did not have the same name for Takua, and just used a throwaway name for the time being. George also shares a color scheme with Takua from Bionicle Quest for the Toa, where he has a yellow body and red feet, as opposed to Takua, who has yellow feet and a red body. Tyrant is a member of the Shadowed One species who never really got along with the Shadowed One. He made many attempts to overthrow the Shadowed One and take control of the Dark Hunters. In a battle with Lee Khan in Metro Nui, he was thrown into the Silver Sea and presumed dead for many years. However, he would later emerge, looking to seek revenge against the Shadowed One for allowing the Dark Hunters to leave him to die those thousands of years ago. The Anu Metru Archive Massacre was an event during the Matoran Civil War. Makuta Teradax locked many Matoran in the archives of Metru Nui and unleashed the captive Rahi on the Matoran. The Matoran who were locked in the archives were brutally killed and the Civil War was finished after the events. The original perpetrators of the war were sent to the pit. The Turaga of Mata Nui knew about the Rakshi, which is why they were able to identify them during their appearance for the first time on Mata Nui during the Mask of Light saga. As Toa, they had battled the Rakshi on Metro Nui and of course, there were Rakshi in the archives. They must have never told the Matoran about the Rakshi because they had not seen any for around a thousand years and did not consider them a threat anymore. This address, when typed into Google Maps, takes us to a restaurant in the Czech Republic. I'll let you read the name. This theory is pretty much self-explanatory. One might think LEGO intentionally set Bionicle Gen 2 up for failure by not giving it the attention and availability as popular selling themes like Ninjago or Star Wars. Whether you agree or not with this theory is up for you to decide, but it would not make sense for LEGO to invest so much money into a series they wanted to fail. The goal of every brand is to make money. Damaging their brands would not be in any company's interest. Energized Protodermis is a substance that was fought over and caused the shattering of Spirus Magna. Energized Protodermis created the plant life of the island of Mata Nui and even transformed the Toa Mata into the Toa Nuva. 
But did you know that Energized Protodermis is completely sentient? Energized Protodermis can take the form of any being and can even speak. In the game Bionicle Maze of Shadows, the Energized Protodermis takes the form of Makuta Teradax, but in the book with the same name, the appearance of the Energized Protodermis resembled the Toa Metru. The latter is considered canon. Takanuva was originally going to have a larger role in the final online serial. Takanuva would have intervened in the war against a force that was looking to harm the planet, which could mean going up against the likes of Velika, the Shadowed One, the Baraki, or even the Toa killing robot Merendar. Takanuva, or Takua, was the first Matoran to ever be created, and I'm sure this would have been brought up if Takanuva had met the great beings. During the battle in the Borok Nest between the Borok Call and the Toa Nuva, the Toa were able to win the battle by overcharging the Borok Call's elemental powers. In the battle, Levok Call's vacuum ability sent him skyrocketing and into the orbit of Aqua Magna. Now we all know outright the other Borok Call had been destroyed, but Levok Call for the longest time had not been confirmed dead, just orbiting Spirus Magna and fully intact. However, Greg Farshti has stated the Borok's body has not survived. This kind of sucks because I would have loved to see Levok call return one day, perhaps another being looking to seek vengeance, but we wouldn't be able to move without a Krana. This entry is about the fact Phoenix translations of Bionicle comics were no longer made after the Toa Metru story in 2004. This isn't the first time LEGO has ended localization for Bionicle in a country before. After 2005, Bionicle fans in Japan found that LEGO no longer dubbed Bionicle in Japanese. This includes commercials, books, comics, and even Web of Shadows, all not localized in Japanese due to low sales. It's to note, however, the Bionicle community in Japan is still pretty strong. There is a TTV thread on this topic. Link of course in the description if you wish to check this out for yourself. If you had watched the Bionicle movie, Bionicle Legend Reborn, you would notice that there were multiple Skrull who all looked the same. Reminder that the Skrull are not actually of Glatorian species, but are very similar to the Glatorian. There exist sisters of the Skrull, but they have formed their own tribe outside of Tuma and the fully male rock tribe. Seeing how savage the Skrull are, they perhaps kidnap female members of their species to create more Skrull. This entry is probably more of a prediction, seeing how Matoran who were created after Agori might be treated unfairly to their more organic relatives, the Agori. It would not be surprising that conflicts break out over the new society. Unrevivable characters are beings in the Matoran universe who have died in ways that cannot allow them to be revived aboard the Red Star. A few ways you could be exempt from being revived include having your body be absorbed, dying in a way that has your body completely unsalvageable, usually this means a strong blow to the head, being a member of the Makuta species, or if you die outside of the Great Spirit Robot. In the 2008 online serial, Dwellers in the Dark, Pterodax had revealed himself and battled the Order of Madinui, and in the ensuring battle sent a sonic blast that destroyed Brutaka's Kanoe Olmak, and supposedly killed the pit mutated Zaktan by destroying his aquarium, which allowed him to breathe. However, because Zaktan's body is made up of millions of tiny protodite, he was able to reconstitute his body. He would later reveal himself to be alive, and plunged into a pool of energized protodermis with the idea that merging with the creatures in the pool of liquid protodermis would improve his weakened form. That pool being used by a group of Skakti looking to rebel against Teradax by creating a creature called the Golden Skin Being. Greg Farshti himself has confirmed both male and female Skakti exist, and that female Skakti are even more aggressive and destructive than their male counterparts, so this entry seems a tad bit odd. It only begs the question, however, how hard of a time would the Toa and Nika have had? they had to fight a group of six female Skakti instead of six male Skakti. This entry is really hard to sum up so shortly, so sorry if I'm missing any details. I'll put a lengthy post explaining the whole situation in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Well to summarize, Hoserix was some sort of shit post mock created by TTV user Giratina. Their entry was just a joke at first, but it soon picked up a lot of attention from people on TTV and people outside of TTV who were looking to disrupt the canonization contest. An entry that should have been removed almost became the winner of the first Toa canonization contest. Hoserix has gone 
gone on to be infamous in the Bionicle community, an entry that was voted for by trolls, people who hated the idea of canon contests, and people who just hated TTV, all worked together to try and astroturf this contest. Nuju is a Turaga only spoken bird Rahi language. His reasoning was that he wanted to only speak to people who had the patience to. He trained Matoru to be his translator, even though Nuju could still speak regular Matoran. In the fourth Chronicle book, Nuju has Matoru translate, only Matoru refuses to translate what Nuju said to him about Turaga Anoa. Of course, it's easy to tell that Nuju didn't have anything nice to say about the Turaga of Stone. As we know, the League of Six Kingdoms were six empires created by the Baraki way back when in the Matoran universe, and that their kingdoms had been lost to time. However, at the end of the Bionicle story, we know Karapar had been slain by Tren Krom and that Takadox had went rogue, meaning the only Baraki who are left are Kalma, Mantax, Elek, and Prydak, meaning there is nothing stopping them from recreating their empires. They even originally were looking to seek partnership with the Shadowed One to rebel against Teradax, but that deal fell through. This, however, did not stop Prydak from marching an army toward Metronui. The City of Silver is one of the pocket dimensions Takanuva explored while dimension hopping to warn the Toanuva of the energy storms of Kardanui. The city is inhabited by the Kistora, and as we know, the Kistora also operated the Red Star. The connection between them is mysterious, but you have to remember the Kistora were not the original inhabitants of the city, so maybe in an alternate universe, the Red Star malfunctioned so badly it crash landed on another planet that was studied upon by the great spirit robot. This is a strange theory, but not entirely impossible. We know Matoran are sometimes mistaken for others, like in Monog, Taipu and Hafu had their masks accidentally switched, but in the CGI, their masks were the exact opposite. In Monog 2, there is a reference made to this, as meeting Taipu, Holly will confuse him for Hafu. So could Yuki have switched his identity with Hafu so he could stay with Maku on Machinui? Doubt it, but you could think whatever you want. A little background to this entry. We know the Turaga from Lezevik's homeland had gone mad and had the Matoran of the island sent to the realm of Karzani. Karzani rebuilt the Matoran in diminished, weaker forms, but the entry implies the Turaga was not crazy and the Turaga was right to ship the Matoran off to be rebuilt. Perhaps they were actually disobedient and the Turaga had enough of a temper to ship them off. It's very possible that the Turaga might have been a short-tempered fire Toa, but we don't know. We will probably never know the actual reason. This is an entry I decided to add, seeing how this story is almost never talked about anymore. In 2019, a user on Reddit named Bleachpong posted on the subreddit r slash paranormal that he and his brother were hearing noises from his childhood playroom. One of the sounds his brother recalls is his father calling him, only to find out he was the only one home. After sharing their story with their friend, they said they would record the noises and show him that they were not making it all up. Well, they did record a video, but it wouldn't be until after re-watching the tape would they notice something off about a Bionicle mod that they had made. The video speaks for itself, and I highly suggest reading the whole story. The Elemental Lords were former Glatorian and an elite Skrull who the Great Beings gave elemental powers to so that they can act as rulers for each tribe of the same element. We know that they started the civil war that led to the Shattering, but much after that, they had little story involvement. The fifth cancelled Bionicle movie, however, would have gone more in-depth to each one of the Elemental Lords' character, though never confirmed if Gen 1 continued after 2009 it's more than likely that LEGO would have released the Elemental Lords as sets. Perhaps they would have been the year's canister villains like the Bakuda in 2008 or the Baraki in 2007. If you read the comics back in 2008, you would know Gorast was a huge sim for Makuta Teradax. She was so dedicated to his plan that she even killed Makuta Krika and Ikarax because they wanted to abandon Teradax's plan. Krika was just trying to warn them to escape Kardanui before the energy storm started but she was so trusting of Teradax that she didn't want to listen to him. Gorast was also the first Makuta to side with Teradax, so it shows that she's willing to do anything for the big guy, even if it means meeting her own demise. 
Tahuti, the Anu Matoran, was an archivist who worked at Wanua, cataloging Metronui's collection of Rahi. Tahuti was also a friend of Akmau. With little info to go off here, it's only safe to assume the author of the iceberg is implying Akmau took the fall for his friend. Quite a convoluted entry, but seeing how Earth and Stone Matoran can share each other's colors is not out of the realm of possibility. In the first year Bionicle was released, the Maori people had filed a lawsuit against the Lego company for using Maori cultural and religious terminology for their fictional world. To prevent the lawsuit from going through, Lego changed the names of characters in the Bionicle lore. I wouldn't imagine a lot of Maori people being too upset with the use of their language in the story. A Maori representative was impressed by Lego's willingness to fix the story, to not exploit their culture. The Maori even allowed Lego to continue using certain Maori words like Kanoi, Toa, and even Matanui. Mike Bloomberg, former mayor of New York City, is the father of Georgina Bloomberg. Well, him and his daughter have nothing to do with Bionicle. Georgina had Catherine Hopka ghostwrite romance novels for her. Hopka in the past wrote the first three Bionicle Chronicle books and the Mask of Light movie novel. Hopka has not written for Bionicle since 2003 and she wrote for Georgina Bloomberg in 2011. The original Mata Nui online game was supposed to have each village on Mata Nui only have 12 villagers per Koro. This was changed before the game was completed, and now there are around 1,000 Matoran for Metro Nui in the story. Anona is a creature that has the power of psionics and the ability to eat dreams of beings, driving her victims to insanity. Anona existed before the great beings and filled their minds with madness, implying she has the ability to create dreams as well. The great beings ended up instead becoming inspired by her dreams and used them as inspiration when creating. So if creating a dream where Bionicle is rebooted and ended right during the climax is her doing, then she is really good at driving people mad. If Anona was real, she would definitely be behind behind all the Bionicle dreams people have. The Golden Armor was a set of armor coded into the Mask of Life in case Tahu would ever need it in battle. The Mask of Life created the armor from organic material. The Golden Armor can destroy all solid antidermis around it, but the Makuta evolved into a gas state of antidermis and were immune to the armor's abilities. Rakshi Krata, on the other hand, are made of solid antidermis, and the Rakshi of Heat Vision were eradicated on the sands of Bara Magna. One thing interesting about the armor is it also gives Tahu the ability of all the Krata, just like the Makuta, so the armor having some kind of sentience would be cool. The Mask of Life is known to mess with everyone who comes within contact of it, so it could have very well have created some sort of proto-Makuta. Before Makuta arrived on Mata Nui, the Matorn and the Rahi were known to get along for the most part. However, after Teradax intervened, the Matorn and Rahi relationship seemed to have deteriorated. Rahi would attack the Matorn and they would defend their villages from the Rahi tax in return. But as the Bionicle story goes on over the years, the relationship between Matorn species and Rahi would become even more complex and more developed, with Matorn and Toa working side by side with the creatures. It shows that the relationship between the two are far more complex than what the story originally had intended. Zayn is the Spinjitzu ninja of ice from the Ninjago series. Matoro also was associated with ice, and in the season 3 finale of the Ninjago cartoon, Zayn sacrifices himself in order to save his friends. I'm sure you can see what the entry on this iceberg is trying to imply here by now. This is just a Bionicle version of the every copy of Mario 64's personalized urban legend. I did used to think as a kid the NPC characters you'd fight in arena battles were actually other players and that the arena battles were online. It was around the time I was really into Pokemon Battle Revolution, so I assumed it was the same thing here, since you had to play the game online. So to save space and prevent bootleggers from stealing original LEGO molds, LEGO destroys old part molds. I heard they are buried, but they could also be melted. If they were molded into designers, that would be cool, but like the last entry, this one is just a bad theory. Though not out of the realm of possibility, just wouldn't seem very practical, seeing how a LEGO statue made of LEGO bricks would be more appropriate. 
The Paraka wrap was discovered back in 2020 to have an extended version. This version was found by Ganon the Great, a person who collects old CDs. This CD with the Paraka wrap in particular was found on a now defunct Disney Channel block called Jetix. Bionicle seems to have an okay track record of its lost media being rediscovered and found. A link to the extended version is in the description below. Mata Nui was the sole being who controlled the Great Spirit robot and was created by the great beings to learn from other civilizations in the universe so that he may return to Spirit's Magna and fix it by bringing knowledge of how to prevent conflict. Now the original story would have had the great beings completely escape their home planet on a giant biomechanical robot. The Matoran were the maintenance crew of this robot, the Toa were guards, and the Borak acted as the cleanup crew. The Toa were tasked to guard precious cargo, that cargo being a race of beings, though they were confirmed not to be human. This is a continuation of the last entry. A being known as Makuta would sabotage the Mata Nui ship causing it to crash land on an ocean planet with the island of Mata Nui already being there. Makuta would have wiped the memories of the beings beside the Toa who were stuck in their Toa canisters. They would evacuate the Great Spirit robot to the island. Makuta would have acted as some sort of extraterrestrial entity and not created by the great beings, so he was considered an alien. One thing to note is there are technically aliens in the Bionicle universe in the forms of other civilizations on other planets as well. Shadow Stealer was a former member of the Hand of Artaka. He was considered a hero back in the day. He was never invited into the Order of Mata Nui, so he ended up joining the Dark Hunters. The Shadowed One sent him on a mission far away in the universe that he thought would take many years to be completed. However, Shadow Stealer finished in a few days and started heading home. He even killed Dark Hunters on the way back to Odina, who were rumored to have been hired by the Makuta themselves. Ironically, Shadow Stealer can create literal portals that he can enter and teleport anywhere to, but yet he still chose the long journey to and from from his mission's location. Also, were the other entries to the Dark Hunter contest so bad that LEGO thought this mock was actually considered good enough? Okoto is an island from the second generation of Bionicle. Now regarding this theory, I would say this is false. Yes, both Okoto and Metronui's regions are distinct at first glance of the map. The problem is the region of Metronui and Okoto are mixed around. Kometru and Tametru are different on each island for example. Also we have to remember that LEGO rebooted the Bionicle story for Generation 2 because they felt the original was too hard to follow for their intended audience. The Borok Call were clones of the original Borok that sported new claws and head shields, and a lot of silver colored pieces. Their head shields were their primary color and had their own unique patterns with their claw piece as a sort of identifying insignia. However, you might end up with a misprint of the head shield. There are a lot of people who have gotten Borok Call head shields with the right color but the incorrect shield pattern. I myself was recently lucky enough to get a Tanrock Call with a Panrock Call head shield pattern. You should check your own Borok Call and see if you own one of these not well documented misprints too. The Red Star, as we know it, is a place that dead Matoran universe beings that fit a certain criteria are sent to to be repaired and sent back to the Matoran universe. The Red Star also is used to help the Mata Nui robot leave the atmosphere of planets by attaching to his back. On top of that, the Red Star can create Toa, although they have to be outside of the Matoran universe robot. In the online serial Riddle of the Great Beings, Harda, Cortesius, and Kirbold journey to the Valley of the Maze to learn more about a map of the Red Star that was found by Tarduk. One thing that's odd is the elemental Lord of Rocks riddle at the end of the story is never explained. I imagine the riddle would have been explained later, but LEGO did not allow Greg Barsley to keep writing. Now, we also know the Castora have been dissecting Red Star inhabitants, as revealed in yesterday. Yesterday quest. They began dissecting beings after the teleportation malfunction to try and figure out why it had not been working. Another weird feature about the Red Star that was mentioned in Yesterday Quest was the fact that the Red Star had organic walls, yet when touched they were as cold as ice. Overall, the Red Star is just a large plot hole in the Bionicle universe, something that just had so much potential, perhaps even more potential than the original zombie space station that Greg Farsty had originally intended. Anarcho Primitism is a political belief that humans should secede from modern life and inventions like factories and other modern technology and return to a more simpler way of life. When accounting for the early years of Bionicle, you can see the connection is quite clear. The Matoran escaping from the advanced island of Metra Nui that had large furnaces, a chute that transferred items all around the island, and giant TV screens that broadcast their leaders scattered in every city, to a world where wildlife flourished and nature was untouched is a good example supporting this entry. The core processor was a heavy 
heavily guarded location underneath the Colosseum. It housed Mata Nui's spirit, and afterwards it housed Makuta Teradax's spirit. When Makuta Miserix broke into the Great Spirit Robot's core processor, he discovered two dead Toa-like beings. These two were Glatorian who were in charge of piloting the Great Spirit Robot in case anything bad were to happen. The Fire and Jungle Glatorian were kept in stasis, waiting for their time to be called on. However, they died during the Great Cataclysm. The Element Lords were created by the Great Beings and were created as leaders of their Element tribe of Glatorians. The Element Lord of Earth is known to be calmer than the others, and she seems to let the other Lords fight so that they can weaken themselves. It's a smart way to become stronger, let her enemies become weak, and then move in once they're all too tired to fight. Teradax has also used this strategy when confronting Icarax for rebelling against him. This entry is a half-truth. Bob Thompson said wheels were never invented in Bionicle. However, this was later changed to that there were no wheels on the island of Metronui. If you re-watch the Metronui movies, you'll notice vehicles either fly, float, or have legs to move. This entry is like the question you ask as a kid. If God created everything, who created God? So if the great beings created everything in the Matoran universe, then who created the great beings? Even though the Matoran would revere the great beings as gods in a way, the great beings at the end of the day are mortal because they are part of the Glatorian race. It means they had to have had parents too. Perhaps even the parents of the great beings passed on their love of creation to their offspring. A scrap feature in the first Mata Nui online game would have had there being a secret shadow element tribe that worshipped Makuta instead of Mata Nui. But as you already know, this plan was scrapped and we wouldn't see Shadow Matoran until 2008. However, Akmal would instead be the sole Matoran at the time working for Makuta after being lost at sea and rescued by Teradax, who in return brainwashed him into thinking he was thrown overboard the transportation vessel by the Toa Metro purposely. This entry begs the question, what if Bionicle was actually sabotaged? I have my doubts about this one. Bionicle joints, even from before 2007, can still break. It is kind of strange that LEGO never tried to recall the lime green sets, but it would have been way too expensive, I suppose. Lime green joints was just one of the many signs that quality control Bionicle was going down the drain. It would only get worse in the coming years. One example of this would be the use of squared socket joints instead of the regular rounded ones. To the best of my knowledge, it seems like this entry is talking about when Jawler, Holly, Kongu, Nuparo, Hyuki, and Matoro escaped Karzani and Toa canisters. They were changed into Toa by the Red Star. As we know, one of the Red Star's function is to replace the bodies of the deceased beings of the Matoran universe with new repaired bodies and are sent back to the core universe. But of course, the Red Star function was broken more than a thousand years before the events of the Ignition Trilogy. Their original bodies were just mutated and turned into Toa because one of the many functions of the Red Star is turning Matoran into Toa outside of the Matanui robot. Voparok is a member of Sidorok's race. His body was modified so that he could sense fluctuations in the space-time continuum. When Vakama used the Vahi, it alerted Voparok to Metronui. Though he was unsuccessful in stealing the mask, he was able to steal the mask at time for Metronui in a second attempt, during Teradax's reign, and is now in possession of it. Vakama threatened to destroy the mask of time, knowing that if it is destroyed, it can alter the universe timeline catastrophically, destroying the fabric of reality. So if the mask of time were to be destroyed by Voparok by accident, the consequences could be dire. I'm not going to entertain the idea that Voparok could have accidentally destroyed the Vahi and caused a huge change in the timeline. Lego did have the Vahi appear as an easter egg in generation 2. There is also a second generation version of the Vahi and the two masks of time sort of appear like they could be linked together. The City of Silver is a dimension inhabited by the city building Rahi and the Kastora. We know the Kastora inhabit the Red Star in the core universe as well. The City of Silver was built by a Rahi-like species and originally, Takanuva kicked it out of the city, not knowing the Kastora were actually stealing the city from the Rahi. Takanuva would later correct this mistake and return the city to the Rahi by tricking the Kastora out of the city with fireworks. There is also a third being in this dimension, a giant spectral mask that resembles a how. I have a theory that the giant spectral mask is actually a great being 
who's just projecting his voice onto a hologram so that Takanuva wouldn't know the great being's existence yet. My theory is, the Kastora were brought with him, but he created the city building creatures as a sort of companion species. The Rahi's ability to create seems like a trait a great being would give its creation. This is just my interpretation of this entry, however. Valika gave the inhabitants of the Matoran universe free will so that he could spice up his observations of the Matoran universe. However, since the Castor of the Red Star were never given free will, they are soulless and do their duty without second thought. Because they were outside of the Matoran universe when Valika turned on the sentience inside the Matoran universe. Virtues like duty and destiny of course shape a being's free will because the act of whether or not they perform their duties is itself a being's free will in action. Xenoblade Chronicles was a game created for the Wii back in 2010 and is a story about the human race struggling against an enemy race of highly advanced robots. Now if you played or even watched the first cutscene in the game, you would know that the two races live on top of giant robots, similar to the way the Matoran universe houses all of its beings. If that wasn't all, the Teletia, sorry if I'm butchering the name, a rival race of robots only have one goal, and that is to cleanse all life off the giant robots, similar to how the Borok function. The Teletia are also mutated from other beings who live secluded from others, Similar to the Matoran of Cardinui, shout out to the reddit user Levobertus for posting this information, it was very helpful while researching. If it wasn't apparent enough, I don't know a lot about Xenoblade in general. Trenkrom was created by the great beings before modded Nui to watch over the Matoran universe while it was being built. One thing to note is that his body is entirely organic and that he's incredibly horrifying in appearance, covered in tentacles and hooks. He can drive people to stare at his body for too long to insanity. One of the three virtues is destiny. Destiny is what a being's purpose in life is. The destiny in the case of the Toa Metru was to save the heart of Metru Nui, aka the Matoran. A being's destiny is given by Mata Nui. It is a way for the Great Spirit to interact with the beings in the Matoran universe. Things like Protodermis can also determine destiny. Whether or not something is allowed to mutate or just be destroyed is Protodermis' way to control a being's destiny. Papu and Rangi were characters from an early build of the first Mata Nui online game and were mentioned by Nokama as having plans for Takua. Jawler also mentioned Takara was named by the two brothers. Papu and Rangi were confirmed to be just stand-in names for the great beings by Alistair Swinnerton, writer of some of the earliest Bionicle story internal guides. So even though the names have been retconned, the idea of the character still exists in canon. Now for the final entry on the iceberg. Some great beings went to space. 2001 concept is still canon. This theory states that some of the great beings had journeyed into space. Well, we do know Velika journeyed on board of the Mata Nui robot. Maybe there were others on the Great Spirit robot in disguise, and maybe other great beings journeyed into space to explore other planets using alternative means. Now the 2001 concept was that the great beings created Mata Nui and immediately boarded so that they could colonize a new planet. So on the off chance a few great beings didn't have complete fate in the great spirit robot, they could have possibly created their own ship and traveled on their own. This would call back to my theory of the silver city pocket dimension. Maybe the great beings have occupied dimensions like these. And that was the Bionicle Iceberg. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you like these kind of videos, or just Bionicles in general, please consider subscribing, as this will not be the last Bionicle related video on this channel. Thank you for watching.